All right, what's on the bench today? It is a Crone Height Model 3500 filter. Now, um, Mike's radio repair guy, Mike, <laughs> uh, sent me this. It was at the very bottom of the box, so it's been pulled out today. So thanks, Mike. Um, so what is this thing? Well, it's a bandpass filter. Uh, there's a low uh, cut section and a high cut section, so you, and it's audio frequencies, and so uh, or close to audio frequencies. So this one goes from uh, uh, 20, well, the knob goes from 20 to 200. So, and then there's a multiplier, so it's four different bands, so times one, ten, and, and 1K. So this is 20 hertz. And then in the upper position, we have 200K. So it goes between 20 hertz and 200K hertz. So it's a nice audio, audio filter. And uh, these, are, these are identical, okay? And so you can set the bottom somewhere in that range and the top somewhere in that range, okay? So um, pretty self-explanatory, input, output, and a uh, go button. Uh, the power button's right in the center to make it symmetric, and that's a, just a, a power indicator that, uh, that the thing is on. Uh, let's see here. I don't think there's much to see on the, on the back. Oh, there's a little bit, a little bit on the back. Um, can you see that? There you go. Uh, fuse line. Uh, there's actual duplicate inputs on the back, so input output from the back, which is interesting. There's a switch here that we'll talk about a little bit later, um, and you can either have the chassis uh, floating or grounded, which is kind of a weird thing, uh, but I guess gets rid of uh, ground loops and hums and stuff in audio applications. So, uh, so there you go. Um, so I did find the manual. Find the manual for this thing. Let's let's take a look at. Oh, that really blew out the camera. Didn't a second. All right. Um, 1984. Uh, so this thing is uh, bandwidth from 20 hertz to 20 k hertz, 200 k hertz. Um, it is a four-pole Butterworth. Now, there's Butterworth filters, Chebyshev filters, um, uh, what other, uh, my brain, brain's going blank. Uh, Butterworth, Chebyshev, Bessel, uh, elliptical, anyway, there's, there's, there's several types. The Butterworth filter is uh, a filter that has a completely flat response curve. So where it's passing frequencies, it's very, very flat. It doesn't wiggle. Chebyshev kind of wiggles. Butterworths are flat. Um, now this one also has a switch in the back that I, that I showed, showed you that says low Q. If you uh, see your signal ringing on a transient, you can flip that switch and it rounds that off a bit. It, it uh, won't make the response as sharp, but it'll, it'll rule off any, any uh, edges. Uh, it is a plus minus one dB of, of uh, ripple maximum uh, 24 dB per octave, uh, slope, and attenuation greater than 60 dB. So you can get, uh, let's see, you can get response curves like this. You can either set a band pass, the A would be a band pass, and then if you kind of overlap the two filters, you can get this function here that looks like the B curve. Um, yeah. Why don't we take a peek inside? There you go, look at inside. Uh, lots of room, <laughs> definitely. Lots of point-to-point -point wiring on the uh, range switches. Uh, so these are all the decades and these are all the decades. Um, these are nice looking capacitors. I don't think I've seen any look like that before. Uh, the output transistors must be these guys here. They have big heat sinks on, uh, heat sinks on them, although they might be the um, the power supply, that, now that I think about it. Those might be power supply. Uh, let's see, where's the output? The output's here, there's a cable that runs over this away. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if those are the outputs or not. Anyway, uh, TO5 cans, uh, a little TO92 with a heat sink, that's kind of cute. Everything looks pretty nice inside. 
so no op amps. This thing is uh, transistors only. Yeah, let's go in a little closer here. Let's take a look. Um, so I'll give you guys a, a perusal here. So Cronheit built filters since the 50s, I think. Um, so it's kind of their claim to fame, these, uh, these audio filters. Yeah, looks pretty nice. All right, so one of the real interesting features uh, of this machine is these gears. So um, these are duplicate, right? This and this, they're basically duplicate, except for one's a high, high pass filter and one's a low pass, high, a low pass filter, a high pass filter, but uh, they sort of operate the same way. We'll, we'll look at the schematics, but you need to be able to turn the knob on the front and have it do something. And there's uh, multiple stages of the filter. So you sort of have to have multiple stages of, t of uh, uh, adjustment. So when you turn these knobs, you can see, maybe you can't see, but these are all, uh, all, all four of these are turning, okay? So there's four potentiometers that turn on this side and four potentiometers that turn on this side and they're ganged so that they move, they move together. So that's, that's pretty clever. All right, so here's the simplified schematic. Um, there is the uh, high pass section and the low, um, this is the, yeah, this is the high pass because it's a series, series capacitors, right? So high pass can go through, through these uh, capacitors. And then it comes over here to the, uh, to the low pass. High frequencies are shunted to ground with these capacitors. So the low, the low goes through. And then you can see here, there's a, um, oh, I, they weren't four, they weren't four different uh, uh, resistors. They were two, two variable capacitors and two variable resistors. So this is one of those knobs. Um, it had uh, one, two, oh, this is very confusing now. So for one knob, it's controlling this whole thing. So one knob controlled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things. So one of those things that looked like a potentiometer was actually a dual ganged capacitor and then another dual ganged capacitor. So um, uh, two different ganged capacitors and then two different ganged resistors. So that's the way that works. So yeah, very quite clever. Now you can see here we have this high pass section and the low pass section, but just, let's take a look at this. You have a, a, you have a CR and then you have here an RC and then they go into buffer. So now this thing has no op amp. So this is just a buffer, 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 buffer. That These are just buffers, right? And these are just buffers. And so um, you're bringing in a signal here and it's going to lose amplitude. So you're going to take some of that signal and you're going to feed it back up and around and boost that thing back up. And this is sort of the basis of a salon key filter or an active filter where you uh, bring some of the signal back in. Now this is usually uh, accomplished with an op amp. Uh, both the buffering and the feedback happens all in one package. But here we have discrete transistors and so the two functions are broken up. Um, and then uh, this maximally flat, or what, what they call low Q, um, what you're doing is you're lowering the gain of this stage, right? You're bringing back a certain amount of the signal. Let's say you bring back in 50% of the signal. If you click in this extra resistor, you're putting these two resistors in parallel, so you have less. So maybe you're only putting in one quarter of the signal back in, so uh, it doesn't ring as much. Whenever you have feedback, you can cause ringing, and by uh, lowering the gain of this stage, 
uh, you can make it rounder. Yeah, so there you go. Um, the actual schematic, I don't think is readable in this particular uh, data sheet. Yeah. Uh, it is not, it is not readable, but you can see there's just a bunch of uh, PNPs and NPNs that do all of the, all of the buffering there. All right. So, uh, I'm going to stop this video here and uh, part two will be us turning this thing on and, and, uh, and giving it a try. Okay, this has been the uh, Crone Height Model 3500 from uh, originally from Tucker Labs here. 19, 1999. Oh, it was cowled in 1998 and is due in 1999.